yo, what's good? What's happening? We back. Brand new episode of Black Otakus of the Culture. This your boy, Chris J. Happy New Year's 2023. Brand new year. First episode of the whole year, G. And we got the boy Cam here. Yo, yo. Trail Sav here. Here. Yeah. And we're just glad to be back. And we're going to keep our word going to be a lot more consistent as a unit this year. So why else? What better way to start than doing an episode on the first day of the year? So with that said, we're going to get right into it. We're going to go back to last year for a little bit and recap uh, what moments of anime, favorite anime, uh, moments from manga, movies, gaming, all of that from the past year then we get then as we look into the new year so that said we're gonna go ahead and start with anime first um since we that just go from we already know Daytra watched at least so uh Daytra, go ahead and say jojo <laughs> <laughs> so my three anime is jojo shout out to stone ocean even though it took too long uh cyberpunk literally blew expectations out of the water and thanks for reminding me the league of legends can't think of the name Arcane, Arcane. There you go. Very. Th- I went in there. I went into that show not even caring. I needed something to watch the background noise and got completely invested. Uh, the music was fucking by. Was that Imagine Dragons? Like who made that shit? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think yeah. Shout out to Imagine Dragons. Dragons. That was the that's the whitest thing I'm gonna say this whole entire podcast. But shout out <laughs> to Imagine Dragons. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for me. All right. Cool. Cool, cool. Cam, you go ahead and get yours out the way. Uh, Alright, so I got a couple honorable mentions. Um, watched a lot of anime this year, unfortunately. Um, but with that, there were a lot of gems. Uh, a lot of diamonds in the rough. Uh, first things first, honorable mention to Al Alshi. Great soccer anime. Got me into the manga. Any show that gets me into a manga is already high up on my list because you make me want to read, which is a, a crazy thing to do nowadays. Got Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting. Really enjoyed that show. Uh, very wholesome, um, especially coming something coming from after Spy Family. It was just a nice, refreshing pace uh, for a show. And I hope we get a season two because it was a, I actually really enjoyed the show. Uh, Love After World Domination, rom-com, uh, Sentai Hero. Love that show. Really great. This year. Uh, Mob Psycho Season 3, absolute fire, phenomenal ending, like really great. It closed out a lot of chapters um, for a lot of characters you didn't really expect them to focus on. And I'm, I'm actually really glad the season ended with like, spoiler alert, with Mob basically being the final boss. That was actually pretty fucking cool. So shout out to uh, Mob Psycho Season 3. That was really good. Uh, Chainsaw Man. Uh, gets an honorable mention because I've already read the manga like two years ago. So like it's not going to be in my top five because I already know what's going to happen. But I wanted to put it on the list because enjoyed the animation, enjoyed the enjoyed what they did with um, the source material. Um, so yeah, it's been good. Fuck the manga though because that's been absolute trash. Uh, and uh, Vermil and Gold, I put that on, on my list as well. The only reason I have it on my honorable mention is because it's an etchy anime that I actually really enjoyed um, for the plot and for the plot. But no, like, it, it actually had a really good story. I like the two main characters. Uh, and the etchy moments didn't make me roll my eyes. It was just kind of like a five second, you know, ooh, boobies. And it kind of moved on to the story. So I can appreciate that. But on to my actual top five list. Uh, we got uh, Demon Slayer Season 2. Had to put that on the list like <laughs> that's that, i'm that, surprised that, that, that i mean like the, that those like last couple episodes were like top tier like top tier um yeah. great animation uh ufotable was on crack cocaine throughout that entire event. i don't know like like going to like looking up a video of like them somebody going frame by frame of that like fight sequence uh between the the hashira and uh the demon like, dude, they were on crack with that working in that studio doing that entire animation. Uh, number four, I got Classroom of the Elite uh, season two. Great. I, I mean, it's been so many years since I seen that show and to see that, you know, it got the love and attention it deserved. And that final episode, the final two episodes were like really good. Peak, 
uh, Toxic Aya Nakoji Kun. So shout out to folks. Uh, number three, I got Blue Lock. Great, great show. Loved it from start to finish. I'm so glad it's, it's actually getting a second core. So January 7th yep. is when it's coming. Right, right away, right. too. So it starts next week. So, yeah, I'm, I'm actually really hyped to see what's going on. It, it ended off on a really good note. So I'm, I'm really excited to see what the second selection is. And I'm for sure, because after the 24 episodes and stuff is done, I'm for sure going to check out the manga because I, I, I need to see what happens next. Uh, number two, I got Tomodachi Game. Really, really like that show. That show made me binge the entire manga as like halfway throughout the season. I didn't even finish. I didn't even finish the show. I just went straight into the manga, and it was like I was just like reading chapter to chapter to chapter to chapter, and it's still it's still really good. So, if we do get a season two, just know that it keeps getting better and better and better. And uh, Yuichi Kun is a is a top tier smart protagonist, so you get to kind of see the, the the shenanigans he gets up to. Especially when they go into the adult Tomodachi game. So, shout out to Tomodachi game. Uh, and number one, definitively, there's literally no competition this year. I'm sorry. Bleach Thousand Year Blood War. Phenomenal. Uh, like, I I can't believe I said as much as I give Bleach crap, this season has been great from start to finish. Like, the fact that this show made me look forward to Mondays is a wild feat. Like, I was looking for Every time it was Monday, I was like, okay, cool. I get to watch Bleach. Um... And the animation, the OST, mwah, just everything about that show hit. Um, the fight scenes when they had them were good. The story, like just everything, everything hit the hit the nail on the head. So um, big ups to Bleach. I'm looking forward to that because we're getting four cores. So hopefully they once they get towards the end, they deviate from the manga and Kubo can kind of put in the stuff that he wanted to. I need to deviate where they, after they left off. Yeah. That's where you need to do some just, deviating. Because, you know, when he was getting the whip from Shonen Jump, bro, so hopefully he's able to, like, contribute, like, and say, hey, this is where I wanted to take the direction of my my series, so let's go in that direction. So um, hopefully we get, to, we get to see that, um, whatever he really wanted the ending to Bleach to be. So, yeah, those are my top five anime for this year. Um, Cool. So for me, <clears throat> my honorable mentions, uh, Chainsaw Man is in there as well. Uh. Like I love the animation. They Mappa has really been in their bag, and Mappa's legit is the slave ship of anime studios right now, and they've been doing their shit. So shout out to them. Uh, but Chainsaw Man's been solid. It's just pacing threw me off. Uh, Blue Lock is also one. It's just, it could it could honestly be higher, but just what we already got, I was impressed. Same for Aoshi. I'm impressed. Shout out to soccer anime being lit. Um, another one, and I don't think none of us said this was Attack on Titan. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna put that on my list. Why well, would you say it? <laughs> I'm not even putting that yeah, on the honorable mention, bro. What's the point? Me, I enjoyed it. I'm good on that show, bro. I'm the only one that enjoyed it. Well, for me, it was more the the Titan fights and the moment, the memeing moments. Those were the ones that really made it honorable mention for me. Was the moments? It's not necessarily like, oh my god, like it was amazing because it was ass. But the moments in itself, seeing certain moments be animated, made up for. Um, another honorable mention, uh, Demon Slayer, solely because if. The, if the whole season was like the last three episodes, I would have been like, "Yo, this is awesome." But the be first half of that yeah, season, it was a slog. Was the first, the first like three, four episodes was like really bad. It was a slog to get through. It, it's, it's just like you got carried at the third after the third quarter. And it was just like, "All right, cool." Like, but it makes it honorable mention regardless. Um, let's see. Also, just gonna throw this out here. Uh. Don Mashi, aka Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in the Dungeon. The most recent season really, really showed a lot of maturity in the writing because shit gets really dark and real. And I just enjoy what the direction that they really went with this season. Some people didn't fuck with it because of the direction. It wasn't so, oh, we're going to have random pervy moments and shit. Like, this was legit. A, hey, some dark shit is going on here. And niggas is gonna suffer the consequences for it. So 
overall, I really enjoyed uh, the direction of that. Um, I think that's it for my honorable mentions. Uh, so my top five, Classroom of the Elite, easily. Um, I was just impressed. Like, I benched it right before it started. And I was like, yo, this nigga, uh, what's my boy name, Cam? Ana Koji. Uh, that's a real nigga. That's a real nigga from episode one to the end of the season. That's a real smart nigga right there. And I'm hoping, because I've I read a little bit, I'm like, I need more. I need more. Because yeah. this dude, he keeps doing some other shit. I'm like, yeah, I can't wait. I just can't wait to see it. Um, JoJo, Stone Ocean, easily, like, entertaining. Entertaining and just... Even the end where Poochie said, hey, look, bro. Hey. What? We don't talk about the end in front of me, folks. My nigga <laughs> dead, bro. My nigga dead, ain't bro. Gone forever, bro. We don't talk about so the end in front of me. That end hit. G- put, like- some respect. put some respect on the main man. Put it right there. It's Big Cujo. That's a big cool job, man. But respect to him, G. Even like Father Poochie said, "Hey, look, bro, I don't care, G. Y'all got y'all gotta go, man. Y'all gotta go. Even though you gotta end up getting taken out by a kid." Respect. I mean, it's like the the one thing you can give Jotaro credit for that shows that every part that he's in, the main villain is always like, "We gotta get him first. Like he gotta be the main one to go, bro." Uh, you know, I'm not too. <laughs> I'm not too salty. About the death, it's just like when you kill a real nigga, you kill a real nigga <laughs> like that. But you fuck dad, we had a parade at his funeral. You know what I'm saying? Like when you kill a real nigga, you kill a real nigga, folks. Not that many real niggas have died in this world. Jesus, real one. MLK, real one. That's like two. Jotaro, real one. <laughs> Goku came back, so I can't say him. But like, not that many people. God, bro, not me, not many real ones. A couple of almost real ones, a couple of tiny real ones. Well, you get, you get like a two fold real ones die millennium, folks. <laughs> and it's, it's crazy, bro. People, he probably one of the people we live forever. We probably be seeing him, you know, damn, bro, they go Joe to one of the greatest JoJo's of all time, man. He supposed to be a steel ball run right now. Oh, oh, white hair Jotaro. Still going, oh, right. just walking up. Yo, we won't ever. Gee, that is that hurts. G, we won't see that. We won't see G. old man Jodoro, bro. It's over. It's crazy. Damn, but uh, shout out to um, JoJo though. Love the show. Real nigga JoJo stands, man. Y'all stand up. Quit being silent. Y'all can't let these one piece tards come over here and start being the most vocal community. In the anime space, bro, start being up there, bro. Let JoJo fans is proud. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't you talking about? You talking about for TikTok, right? Just period. <laughs> period. Anyway, we got the look. Don't don't let nobody say drip in anime without bringing up JoJo. Don't let nobody say fights in anime without bringing up fucking JoJo. Don't let nobody say animation in anime without bringing up JoJo. And don't let nobody ever talk about real niggas without bringing up JoJo, man. Stop letting that shit happen, bro. Okay, put some respect on my goats. I'm done. <laughs> but with that said, all love to uh, JoJo Stone Ocean G. I would we we one day we'll have to rank all the JoJo art like the yeah. It's gonna be a oh, yada, it's gonna be a lot of yelling and furniture moving. <laughs> be a lot of devices. <laughs> 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 Even exactly uh. Uh, the first one, the first Jonathan. First one, the first one gonna be on the the, the, the bottom tier. That's out of that's like bottom. After that, <laughs> that's like a game. After that is straight furniture and and and, and chair movie. Okay, I, I I recently rewatched all of JoJo. It's like that. Okay, it's like that. It's very hard. <laughs> like with, with, with battle tendencies, everything after battle tendencies is very hard to rank. It's very hard to rank, man. Like, man. Your content on the way. Just letting y'all know. Uh, next, honestly, my top three is really a note. Uh, well, JoJo's in my top three, but uh, from there, uh, Spy Family. It just made me feel good every every Saturday when it came on, G. 
especially when it came out, I was at my anime fatigue. I was tired of everything, but Spy Family just made me feel good every fucking week. Every fucking week. Um, and wait, hold on. I feel something. Well, either way, uh, and Bleach, wrapping us up with Bleach. Uh, excellent. Uh, excellent, excellent. Same as Cam, uh, restored to feeling because I was very fuck Bleach. This shit's overrated as hell. I don't know why you niggas love this shit so hard. And, but the feeling was restored. That's all I can sit and say. The feeling was, was restored. So that's it for the for me in regards to anime. Uh, what are we moving on to next? Movies? Movies. Yep. Like I said, I ain't watched movie. Uh, look, if we're going to just keep it simple, Batman was that shit. That was actually crazy. But so, yeah, so, really your, so let's say your list is One Piece, One Piece, Woman King, and and uh, One Piece, Woman King, Black Panther, and the Batman. What's your list? Yep. All right, Detro, you go spit. So uh, starting off uh, with one, I'm gonna go with uh, Multiverse of Madness, banger of a movie. Uh, absolutely loved it. Then with two, I'm gonna have to go with. Um, Thor, Love, and Thunder. Stop the cap. Uh, <laughs> let me go here and stop capping right now. Stop there. the Damn, cap. You said back. multiverse of madness. I was like, hold on, cuz. <laughs> like, hey, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> let me stop right there. So with five, uh, y'all about to be like, this nigga watching what? The first three, y'all gonna be like, Damn, I didn't know they tried to put this under the list. With five, I'm gonna go with all quiet. Okay, I'm gonna start tweaking my boy on night. Um, all Quiet on the Rest of the Front is a war movie. If anybody know me, I like my history. So it was about World War One, I, I believe. Uh, very good movie, very sad, very depressing. And that's how a war movie should be. It should not be all fun and games unless it's Top Gun Maverick. Um, number two is Bullet Train. Probably. That so, too, that movie's so God, right now, that on everything, Netflix. every day, all at once. That's honorable mention for my movie of the year. Honorable mention, right? I'm not saying it's a bad movie. I just said for me, it didn't hit my top. It's not my favorite action movie of the year, right? My favorite action movie of the year is Bullet Train. That was fun. That whole movie was just fucking fun, bro. Um, yeah. Is no. it Brad Pitt? It's, it's Brad Pitt. Yeah, right? Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt has been... The, the, the last two movies I've seen of Brad Pitt has been Bullet Train and What's Upon a Time in Hollywood, right? The last two movies I, have, I watched were Brad Pitt in them. Both of them had me fucking laughing because of this nigga, bro. He, he acted his ass um, off in this movie. Bro, it's, the whole movie was funny. Uh, shout what's black dude named um, Tangerine? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, shout out to the crazy shit, chick bro. that almost <laughs> Tangerine. Sorry for spoiler. Bullet Train was fine. I might run that back. Shout out to, uh, it's, I think it's on Netflix. It's on Netflix, yeah. Yeah, shout out to Netflix. Fire. Um, another Netflix movie. So this was that was like three Netflix movies in a row. It was about to be three Netflix movies in a row. Another one. So if you like How to Train Your Dragon, you will love Sea Beast. Sea Beast is good in terms of like how it looks. It's probably the best looking animation movie this year. Maybe next to Puss and Boots. I think the art style of Puss and Boots is just amazing. Uh, uh, like stop motion for Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio was really good too. But Sea Beast Edge, y'all all know for me. It was freaking fantastic. Um, enjoyed it. Made your heart race and stuff like that through moments. And then you got a big monster that looks huggable. Everything that you need in a animation <laughs> movie. Um, then after that is, y'all thought, <laughs> y'all thought this one going to be the list. Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's me. Um, shout out to that. Even though Dokkan fumbled, the movie didn't fumble. So, um, uh, that came out this year, right? I'm not yeah, sure. It came out this year. Yeah, that was this year, yeah. Yeah, so, um, Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Shout out to Gohan, Zampato. Shout out to, uh, Vegeta think he got a dub over Goku. Made all my, made all the Vegeta fans think he's finally there. When Goku was just like, I just want to go get something to eat. Um, <laughs> shout out to Piccolo being relevant. To all the black people who, for some apparent reason, um, you know, confat they self in Piccolo. Uh, shout out to that. Let's, let's, shout put, out let's, to let's put a comma. Apparent slash corny. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, shout out to uh, Pan. I was just watching a clip of the movie in 4K. One, that movie in 4K is crazy. Me watching the bootleg, <laughs> it, was the, it was the best looking thing I watched. But in 4K it was really, really good. Um, and it was just Pan and stuff like that. When she hit the bodyguard in the stomach, that shit was... When I say she blitzed that nigga, beautiful. Um, and then one for me is the Batman. All I gotta say for the Batman is da, 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 da. that's it. Uh, <laughs> Batman, and also niggas thought Robert Pattinson was gonna be garbage. He was, my man he went was crazy. Was his Duffy. <laughs> he went crazy he that whole amazing. movie. Uh, Zoe Kravitz before she became a weirdo was was fire. Um, the uh, the Commissioner Gordon, he was good. They they made uh, the Riddler tolerable. Uh, so it was just a good movie. My favorite scene is when he when he was running from the cops, and as he got off the building, he tried to fly away, but he ended up getting hit. That truck, oh, it was bro. the CTA bus that hit him, bro. What'd you say? It was the CTA bus that hit him. Oh, God. It was the terminal. But shout out to uh, shout out to um, the Batman. It was a very 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 good movie. That's my top five. All right, man. So I got a couple honorable mentions. It's gonna go to Sonic the Hedgehog two. Um, Who that I, was this year. I prayed on this movie's downfall. Um, we when this when it not Sonic the Hedgehog two, but when original Sonic the Hedgehog came out, I prayed on that movie's downfall, and I ended up really liking it. It's one of the examples of like a studio not really taking stuff from like the source material, but like it it embodies what I expect Sonic to act like in a sonic movie and that's really all i ask for if you're gonna if you're gonna be original at least still embody what the character is and what they represent and what they would do in situations that you put them in the movie and i think that they did a good job with that especially in this movie um I'm, tails is really great uh companion uh knuckles shout out to idris elba it, it, he did it he did his thing with knuckles bro i i i, I really liked his take on the character so um I'm really looking forward to Sonic the Hedgehog 3. I'm really excited to see what they do with Shadow the Hedgehog. Um, I think it's going to be really great. So, big up to Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Jujutsu Kaisen uh, 0. I have that in my honorable mentions only because... Um, what's the name? I think it's Yuta. I think that's the main character's name in that movie. He's yeah. really cool. Uh, and like the hour that we got him, I already like him much better as a protagonist than Itadori. It, Itadori, whatever his name is. So, shout out yeah. to folks. He's also really broken. <laughs> that dude's power is, like, really freaking cool. So, And the fight scenes are really amazing. So, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero gets that honorable mention. One Piece Film Red. Uh, I hate musicals. I, I avoid, like... It's funny because I like listening to anime music, but I just hate, like, musicals in general. Like, and, like music anime and stuff like that. I cannot get into that stuff for the life of me because it's always the same shit. Um... And I don't really care about seeing that. But Film Red was good. It was a good movie as far as like really getting something from Shanks. It's been like damn near 20 plus years since we've seen this man Shanks do something. And we finally get to see him do something. Uh, shout out to the shout out to the anime spoiler. For all them anime only watchers. I don't know why they put that stuff in the movie. Like there's really no purpose of them putting Gear 5th in the movie. <laughs> like at all. But I guess they just... Just throw it in there. I guess they just wanted to flex the animation budget, but yeah, sure. Shout out to that. Um, it was to te they had to t test it before they threw it into the yeah for the anime, anime. Uh, but, canon anime. Yeah, that made, um that makes really no sense. And also, I just want to make the and it's also a good movie to make Kaido fans upset because I don't like y'all because y'all think that Kaido is like the end all be all for One Piece, but Uta is actually <laughs> more powerful than Kaido is since it took Gear Fifth and Shanks to beat her. So y'all gotta hold that. Um, I got Wakanda Forever as an honorable mention. Uh, we gonna talk about Marvel later, but Jesus Christ, um, this yeah. year was like <sighs> this year for Marvel didn't happen. I, it's just a <laughs> blank slate in my mind. Like I just what happened. It is exactly what I've been waiting for. <laughs> I'm here. I was here first. On the Phase line. four really exposed these niggas, bro. Phase four really exposed these niggas, bro. It really did. It really exposed that without Chris Evans, 
without Robert Downey Jr., without some of your strong legacy characters, bro, you really don't have much of a universe. You just don't. So I I just don't know what y'all doing over there. Y'all said that y'all took some feedback from Phase 4 and are going to take that into accountability moving forward or take that into account moving forward for Phase 5. I'll believe it when I see it. All I'm saying, I'm looking at because I love Ant-Man 1 and Ant-Man Ant -Man, Ant -Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp. I love those movies. They're great movies. Are they the best thing ever? No. But for when they came out and from my, and I rewatched both of those movies a couple times, it still holds up. I like those movies. So They're good I'm, transitional movies. I'm looking at... I'm looking at quantum mania with a microscope because we got the phase four uh after fart stink that's that's on ant-man and so if y'all ruin ant-man for me bro oh it's it's gonna be problems bro because i already Man. lost i lost faith in the blade movie because i've been hearing so many things about directors leaving and delays and stuff like that it's making me not have any faith that that movie's gonna be good so uh, y'all, y'all already lost me with Blade. I gotta see that. I gotta see the first trailer, but I've been hearing some not good things about. They haven't even Ryan started singing. filming, so they haven't. They haven't started, but they've they've lost producers and directors. Like this, yeah, I know. Like, so I'm like, I'm not it's concerned like, about a trailer until they get something going. I need, I need to see something for that movie to give me some some bit of faith. Uh, but all that to say is that Wakanda Forever was a, a breath of fresh air, um, in the midst of just absolute garbage can of that phase four was it was a great tribute a uh, great movie uh shuri did her thing um it, it was good so y'all ended off on a y'all ended off on a high note so i'm i'm, I'm glad well i mean i'll say high note but y'all ended off on a note period because you guys were you, you guys couldn't even find the keyboard um until black panther so big ups to uh wakanda forever and i also have the woman king as an honorable mention really great movie i liked it a lot uh, shout out to Viola Davis Acted her ass off Shout out to all the women in the film period bro They went crazy Action was great uh, The story for the most uh, It was some parts of the story I was kind of like eh But that's why it kind of gets an honorable mention But Dragged a little bit I yeah. was like y'all pick up this pace <laughs> But when but when the scenes kicked in Like that final scene When they just started torturing that village bro I was like yeah This is This is when it This is when it, This is when we're going crazy bro <laughs> hey, Turn this up they started, Curtis. they started killing the colonizers and torching that village, bro. I was like, let's go. This is fire. So, Woman King gets an honorable mention. Uh, so, in my top five, uh, so I know all you, all you Marvel fans have signed off the video. Just That was just a preface to say there's no Marvel movie in my top five. Uh, not even close. But, uh, top five, I have Knives Out, Glass Onion. I saw this movie yesterday with my family. It's on Netflix right now. I really enjoyed the movie. Uh the mystery was the mystery is pretty cool um it was a lot of red herrings uh and a shout out to shorty i forgot her name uh, the black actress fine as hell acted her ass off in that movie uh so i highly recommend you see it it's on netflix so if you have netflix you should uh, check it out uh when you can and you should also check out this movie as my number four bullet train uh like the show says really great movie me and my mom went to go see it out in theaters it gave it was like that buffer i would say because John Wick 4 is coming out this year. Oh my God, and I cannot fucking wait for that movie. That's probably gonna be my number one movie of this year, but uh, it was a nice buffer period to get me go to get me something as far as like the Hitman assassin type movies until my, my nigga uh, Keanu Reeves comes back. So shout out to Bullet Train. Number three is Top Gun Maverick. Freaking great movie. Um, campy as hell, but it was a good, it was a good kind of camp. Uh, um, Tom Cruise did a great job. The, the the acting was great. The story was great. It was a lot of emotion. Even though you knew that like nobody was going to die in that movie, it was still a lot of high stakes and emotion that you felt throughout the movies um, in terms of like when they're trying to accomplish their mission and stuff like that. So great movie overall. Um, it was basically the summer blockbuster of this year because I think that I think that trash ass Jurassic Park movie came out this year and that was garbage. So um, Top Gun Maverick kind of saved summer. Uh, straight after that number two i have the batman um uh it was great my favorite scene of that movie is when that car chase with the penguin my man get my man's car get flipped out, out the side of the road he like oh i got him i got him and you just see this man just walking <laughs> you see like... this man's boot walking towards the car and they playing that theme song as he's like 
and I was like, that that's what I want to see. Like, we got to see a lot of the detective Batman, but we also the 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 this movie gave me like niggas being afraid of Batman, and that's what I really wanted to see. Like the fear that he employs when you see uh, Batman is on the case. So that movie was great. Robert Pat Robert Pattinson went crazy. Um, I'm hoping that we get a lot of. I hope they take their time, but I hope we see a lot more movies in this Batman universe because I think they could do a lot of great stuff. Uh, just don't turn it into a musical like the Joker because nobody asks that. Nobody asks for that. Um, <clears throat> but uh, Batman's number two and number one, the definitive best movie to me this year by far. There's literally no competition. Is everything, everywhere, all at once? Like, like I was. I came into that movie with like no expectation. I literally just randomly decided to go watch the movie on like a Saturday. Um, this is after I saw Multiverse of Madness, and people were saying that like people were making making a meme that everything, everywhere, all at once was a better multiverse movie. And like at first, I was kind of like, I don't know, uh, I guess. But when I saw the movie, I was like, wow, this is actually a way better multiverse movie <laughs> than Multiverse of Madness. Uh, it was great. Great action, great story, great characters. Uh, A24 did their thing with this. And I think that, like, um, I know there was another, a couple other A24 movies that came out this year, but, like, this one by far was, like, the best. Um, I, I think that every, everything hit its nail on the head. So, like, it was a perfect movie for me um, as far as, like, everything I've seen this year. So, uh, shout out to that. Shout out to A24. And if you have not seen Everything Everywhere All at Once, do yourself a favor and see that movie because it is worth it. It's worth a rent. <laughs> it's worth a it's worth a Blu-ray purchase. It's worth is is worth it. If you got it on, if it's on a streaming service, it's worth getting that streaming service just to watch that movie. Love that. So um that is my top five movie list. All right, cool. Oh, it's time for the big guns. It's time for what what Chris was uh what Chris was, um, you know, doing all year. Oh wait, no, we gotta do manga first. Manga oh, first, man. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> I spoke too soon. <laughs> we go, we go, we go. We go get Chris with the smoke. I think it's just, I like. We, it's really kind of like the main stuff that we cover when we talk about it on the podcast, as far as the manga stuff. So I'm just gonna kind of spitball, uh, my list. And again, this is just kind of like I don't read a lot of manga. I'm just more so like continuing. So this is more so from a standpoint of manga that I've continuously been reading. Which which ones have I really enjoyed so far? Uh, so number five, I have Al Alshi. I've already said that in anime. I mean, that made me want to read the manga. I'm caught up on the manga, and it's going it's going real good so far. We're kind of on a slow period. Um, because they're not like playing any games it's like a after season type arc um so where it's kind of like them talking about what they want to do next and you know all that sh you know shit like that but it's been real good number four is tomodachi game like i said before the manga is absolutely crazy right now it's on its final arc and like the stakes keep going higher and higher with each chapter <laughs> like every chapter is like this guy's the traitor. And then another chapter is like, no, this guy's the traitor. And then the next chapter is like, no, this is the secret traitor. No, he's not actually the traitor, but this this guy's the traitor who's manipulating the secret traitor who's also manipulating this traitor. It's like a lot of mind games and stuff going on, but it's been, been really good so far. Uh, One Piece is number three. Been going real good. Uh, I mean, this year alone, we got Gear 5th, which was extremely freaking hype. So can't really say much about it. Like, Wayno ended. The fact that Big Mom and Kaido got clapped, Luffy got named. Uh, Luffy is an official. No. Yonko. And no. freaking Buggy is a Yonko too. Like it, it, it's crazy, bro. Like it's crazy. It, Buggy tricked you niggas. Ah, bro. Buggy. <laughs> Buggy is the prime <laughs> example of think. You move smart, man. <laughs> move smart. It's <laughs> not all about this. Manipulate the nigga stronger than you. Oh God, moves. bro. <laughs> Don't lie, bro. So shout out to Buggy being. I wouldn't be surprised if the Buggy even touched the One Piece when he when it all said and done. He would be the first one to touch it, not grab it, but touch it. Yeah, he like grabs it. <laughs> He's like, I he, like he becomes he becomes pirate. He he becomes the official pirate king for like a minute. Like it's like he's like in in the annals of records. It's like you know Goldie Roger, 
then it's Buggy. Oh God. Then it's Luffy, <laughs> Monkey D. Luffy. <laughs> like <laughs> that, that, I, that would be actually absolutely crazy. I mean, and even these recent chapters we've gotten with One Piece. Oh my, you Luchi fans are down bad right now, bro. You Luchi fans are down bad, bro. I'm just happy to see my boy, <laughs> but at the same time, he knows he don't. He got no place there. My man, bro, it, it was so much copium. People going into this fight thinking that, oh, Luchi, Luchi must have gotten stronger. He been training, bro. It's like, like, come oh, on, man. dog. Like, this man's going to get curb stomped. And Luffy, and he didn't, the, the thing is, is, Luffy didn't even have to go gear fifth. He was just going gear fifth to, like, test it out, to continue to test out the form so he can get more comfortable with it. And he blitzed this nigga, bro. He baby shit. It, there was literally, they, they this man Oda drew a panel of him like, oh, I got this new form, Luffy. Okay. <laughs> All right. And nigga punched him in the stomach, and, and he was like, "Oh, he's so strong." And uh, so, uh, One Piece gets a number three. Really great moments this year. Number two is Spy, Spy Family. Um, this year alone, we got the uh, I call it the the cruise ship arc. <laughs> which, if you are a fan of your, if you are a fan of your, uh, when that when that arc comes up in the anime, hoof. Let's just say she gets a lot of feats. So uh, shout out to uh, your Spy Family has been really great. Even this current arc that we're on, there's like a lot of cool stakes going on. So it's been a great read so far. Um, and I'm, I've been enjoying it. And then number one is Black Clover to me, definitively. Um, we got the ending to the, uh, I think it's the, I don't, I don't know what you call it, but like the, it's like the demon arc kind of, not necessarily an end to it, kind of sort of an end to it but yeah that was really cool my boy Asta got a hella feats um and now we're on the final arc with uh <laughs> spoiler alert with the uh, wizard king going crazy uh and shit. <laughs> my. it's gonna go crazy and uh we're we're currently kind of getting a, a a a training arc with Asta so to speak um with him kind of finding out more about utilizing his uh his demon powers and his uh chi that the stuff that he learned from uh captain yami so black clover has been really great this year so those are my top five manga the these aren't manga that came out this year obviously but these are just manga that had really great moments that stuck out to me that deserve to be called out for all right uh pretty much same thing as cam uh one piece lit dragon ball super had his moments it's just Eventually, they dragged this gas and all the mother nigga shit too far. I was just like, all right, cool. And shout out to nigga Freezer. Uh, uh, Sakamoto Days. That's been one of my favorite reads. Even though I, I just read it in bulk. So I just let the chapters build up. Then I read it. But I love Sakamoto Days. I can't wait till that gets animated. I'm really looking forward to for that. Uh. But my man, he, he that nigga, though, G. And then his little sidekicks, they all just seeing their growth as well. Love it. But uh, Sakamoto Days is really entertaining if you just want a nice change of pace. Not big three anime. Uh, I mean, manga to read. Um, that's really it in regards to that. Um, I and can't read the same shit. So, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, oh, I got to talk about the downfall of, of My Hero, too. <laughs> that shit just ass. <laughs> Outright ass. Oh, and man. niggas, Horikoshi is up. This is probably one of the biggest fumbles since Bleach for like a big mainstream. Uh, for a finale arc, I'd say. Because this is like. It was even before the finale, G. Shit was getting really bad. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I remember that nigga Deku got hugged and he said, All right, I'm gonna go take a shower, G. <laughs> Fucking hell. That's when shit really, like, you could have really done some shit. You could have had Deku crazy. be out here like, man. And that's, the, that's the next anime arc that's coming out next is Deku. They're, they're calling it Dark Deku for some reason, but whatever, I, I guess is what it is. But um, that was like, that was to me this year alone, that was like the best part of the My Hero. Yep, um, and my. then that shit said, I right, we're going to jump the shark. We got to get these other niggas involved that nobody who really cares about this series gives a fuck about, G, because they need some spotlight. Fuck yeah. my hero, and Horikoshi is up there with 
uh just did this series just like bleach times of fumbling but worse i never seen a fumble this bad before and i watch football yeah i just every sunday whenever a new mario comes out i just skim through it like i don't even really care what's going on right now like we had the just recently we had the freaking animal rights crap happening that was yeah. like three chapters yeah. of that the mutant quirk shit i'm don't, like oh, don't care about cares? that you never made this a big deal until now i do not care about that at all um and now we're getting the uh Udohada, Udohada, toga and Fropi fight and i'm like i don't care i didn't care about it when it when they first confronted each other and i think it was the villain arc Whenever they confronted each other in the first place, and they were like, "Next time we talk, let's look, next time we meet up, let's talk about romance." And it's like, I don't fucking care. Um, so well, actually, now it's kind of like the villains got the upper hand now, and they're still chasing after her. But she's like, "Yo, fuck y'all niggas," and also, uh, all for one, or is it one for all? Whatever. Uh, he's just talking, to, talking to niggas, and niggas keep falling for that's his quirk press <laughs> niggas, but they attack yeah, him that's it's, his <laughs> and we're still on this dobby and endeavor yeah. stuff bro like we're still on this dobby and endeavor stuff like that stuff should have been taken care of bro like the fact that we're still still in the middle of the fight between dobby and endeavor or not i keep calling endeavor i'm, I'm, I'm so sorry There's the a fight between dobby and sizzle the fact that we're still on that fight is is, is just absolutely insane. Like, move on. You literally and left off. The fact that it's, it's been a whole year, and and that nigga Endeavor still is. We still call him Sizzle. But man, Sizzle, he has, bro. He hasn't man. had he hasn't had a he hasn't had a redeeming moment ever since we call start calling him Sizzle. And like you left off, I forgot how many chapters old goes. The highlight. So the Dark Deku stuff was peak. But one of the highlights in this, this the, the final arc so far has been uh, Deku versus Shigaraki when they like meet up. And mm -hmm. bro, that whole chapter, cold panels. Like you had a cold panel of Deku and Shigaraki staring at each other. Like, and it was just like, and then after that, he was like, but y'all want to know what happens with animal rights, right? It's like no <laughs> like, like this man does not know when to pick moments and focus on them he just likes dropping all these moments around and then going like okay let me just go like pick one stick with one and that's that, that's 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 my that's just my biggest thing critique critique when it comes to the, the, the manga but yeah and i mean you want to not even my hero bro you want to talk about the biggest downfall chainsaw oh. man I, I mentioned this in my anime list. That series sucks now. It is bad. I I don't I don't. There is little part two of Chainsaw Man. There has been nothing good except you know spoilers. <laughs> obviously, when Denji came back, saved the freaking dude. He's like, oh I, dude, there was a cat. That was like the highlight of part two. That was literally the highlight of part two. Other than that, the main, the the new main character is the most boring plank of wood. No, calling her wood because wood has redeeming qualities. You can make fire, you can make houses, uh, you can do stuff with wood. Uh, what's like something that's like completely? Uh, uh, what what's that part of your body that like it can like explode and you can get surgery to remove it and you don't really need it in your body? Your kidney? No, no, not not your kidney. It's something. It, no, I forgot. Um... I forgot what it's called. It's I think it starts with a like one. Of, I remember back in middle school when my friends had you know, it. Appendix. appendix. There you go. Yeah, appendix. she's an appendix. She's useless. You can get rid. You can you can literally get rid of that body part and you can live perfectly fine. She's an appendix. So like it, it's just it's been an absolute snooze fest. Like these past chapters, I'm every Tuesday because it comes out on Tuesday. It, it will come out on Tuesday when the Chainsaw Man anime will come out. And so it was like you got the low of Chainsaw Man and you got the high of Chainsaw Man, was which was the anime. It, it's it's been an absolute crap fest. I remember so many people were talking about like, oh my god, this dude, this dude is like a great manga. Like you should read some of his other works. It's so magical. It's so inspiring. Blah 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 blah. And it's like yeah, but his like main thing, like the main thing that's like getting him recognized, sucks right now. It's trash. So I I, I these these uh. 
calling him like Da Vinci or like the next the next big manga or something like that, bro. Y'all need to stop the cap. Stop the cap. Um. So yeah, that those two shows. So my hero and Chainsaw Man. Whew, been 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 a nasty ride, but we can Me. move on. We'll move on to to, to yeah. what we really want to talk about. We go start with you, Chris. I don't really have much. <laughs> we go start with you, Chris. We gonna talk about. We're gonna we reflect on our our gaming. Now let's preface let's preface this by much saying that Chris Chris is washed. You you still never showed us your list, your PlayStation wrap oh, ups, bro. Oh yeah. You still gotta send that in, bro. <laughs> I looked at it and I was ashamed, my nigga. Yeah, you gotta send us that list, bro. Even though that shit might be updated now, because I I've been playing a lot more, but <laughs> the wrap up the year, but. I'm ashamed. That's all I can say to say is I'm ashamed of myself. <laughs> uh, life sucked. And literally, when when you come home, all you want to do is just sit and watch TV. It's like, damn. It, it is. That's literally what it was. That's all I can say is I'm ashamed of myself. But uh, did I screenshot it? Because <laughs> I, mean, I got the email. I just got to dig through it. But I, I don't know if I screenshot it or not. But I don't feel like finding it. All I'm going to say is, I think it said I had 70 hours of gameplay. <laughs> That's all I remember. <laughs> all. Like, what? In total. Gee, yeah. In total, dog. That, <laughs> bro, that total hurt my soul, G. That total hurt my soul. We played, me and Nitro have played, like, shit. we have played single like multiple single games with more than 70 hours in game time and that's the thing Chris and that's the thing folks we work too and I don't even say oh y'all work from home y'all I mean, work I don't be home. on the game when I'm working but I'm, tell I'm telling you like this especially these past couple months I've been I'd be like on the computer glued like I don't even I, I, can, I don't even have time to pick up a controller like I've been back to back to back oh, meetings bro. and shit bro <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> 70 hours. Um, what was your easy. top played game? At the time, I think it was it was 2K, but I think God of but God of War was like behind it by a couple of hours. Nigga, God of War came out in November, dog. <laughs> <laughs> but, like so this is when it, the thing came out. So at the time it was 2K, but then but number God two was God of War, bro. <laughs> oh boy, really got a dad station, bro. We got one of them home, man. Ain't nothing really in that motherfucker, bro. Oh shit, bro. Boy, what in the world? <laughs> So, it's cool, man. Look, it's cool. Like we, we just, we just making, we just making though. jokes, G. We just making jokes. I know, I know. But the thing that made me laugh the most when I looked at it, it said I was a multiplayer. I'm like, this shit should say zero. It said two. I'm like, what games did I play online with anybody? <laughs> I was That's probably in a, being in a party, nigga. Two hours. Man, that, I probably been in the party for two for a combined total of two <laughs> hours, though. <laughs> I was like, oh nigga, Lord, bro. Well, I'm not even laughing. I'm kind of sad for you. Gee, I, I'm, I'm sad for myself. I'm, I'm like, like oh, it's I'm just the aspect <laughs> of saying, oh, these niggas just playing games all day. They ain't really doing nothing productive. Not even that aspect. As the fact that you got a a big ass system in there just collecting dust. It's just the you fact that. You get to enjoy some of the great, like some of the greatness that's like has been gaming this year. It wasn't the greatest game in the year. It was really, really, really good. It's not gonna be like next year. Next year, Chris, if you got seventy-eight hours next year, <laughs> all the anger is coming out next year. When I was looking at what's coming out this year, I'm like, honestly, I will be playing more. I mean, this year, yeah, technically this year. Oh shit, you, man! Your number two being man. God of War has me crying, bro. Because it takes yeah, it's from January to 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 like November, and like God of War came out in November, bro, and it was your number two. <laughs> that, is, that is crazy. Uh, but okay, so so your list is what? 
My list? No, no, no. Oh, Chris. Chris is list. If I just say game, <laughs> well, the overall sh- what I played. So two K God of War. <laughs> play shit. I don't count two K because two K is just it's two K. Same for WWE two K uh twenty two. I don't really count those, but I would say WW twenty two was it's a favorite game. It was one of my favorites to play this year, but I enjoyed Stray. Didn't finish it, but I really enjoyed Stray and God of War, clearly. And the one out of Elden Ring that I played. The one nigga you bought Elder? Oh no, cause no, Chaz bought it, but <laughs> brought it yeah. like, fuck it, let me play for like two, three hours, and then I, and then after I got clapped by the first boss, I was like, fuck this game. Um, okay. Let's go for me. Uh, uh, stay. And then... Oh no, I got this. I don't even know why I'm. Nigel, if y'all want to know my PlayStation route, we're in a thousand. It's probably like, I don't know, I, I probably still got a screenshot. My shit was horrible. Not horrible in the good way, horrible in like a damn nigga. Damn motherfucker off. Um, let me see. My shit was, I don't think I deleted it. Yeah, my shit was two bands. It was 2,231 with 117 games played. And a thousand like trophies earned and stuff like that. And my most my most played was it it technically don't count because I played a lot of games. It's Overwatch because that was the only game I played like a bunch of in terms of multiplayer. And that's a, un, that's, a that's a unfortunate sick that's an unfortunate uh, number list. It's definitely unfortunate. <laughs> Overwatch um, one, you mean the new one, right? Overwatch two. Overwatch two, yeah, yeah. I think Overwatch one is crazy. Um, in games, um. Honorable mention, my honorable mention will be, uh, what will my honorable mention be? My honorable mention will be, oh, uh, Scarlet. Scarlet. I enjoy Scarlet uh, for what it was. It was a very, um, a good game in terms of, um, like, Pokemon tennis. And, uh, Oh shit! Man, I had drops on. Them. Um, it was a good game for like folks looked ass and, <laughs> and, and needed some like polish and shit like that. Uh, other than that, I say what's up, Tina? Hey, you chilling? I say um, if I go down to my whole entire list. It is, so unfortunately, like I said, I played a lot. So unfortunately, it'll be Horizon at five. Um, it, it was a decent game. It wasn't like groundbreaking. Mm-hmm. It kind of started my platinum journey too. So I started platinum a lot of games after Horizon. Um, Two Point Campus. Now, <laughs> Two Point Campus, I'll put it on the list because I play a lot of strategy games. If y'all know, I play a lot of like a lot of like city building or um, like a lot of management games and stuff like that. I should say management, not strategy. Management. I play a lot of management games like chess type shit. Um, I'm about to get into another one soon, um, but I play a lot of those shows. And Two Point Campus was the one I put the most hours in, had the most fun with. Um, number three is Arceus. I, I, I said I said in the beginning of the year when I play Arceus, it's going to make my list. Um, and Arceus, remember, haven't had fun in a Pokemon game since I played Red for the first time, like it was in Arceus. Um, Arceus was a banger. I really wish they continued the series. Who knows? You know, Pokemon, they'll probably continue the series, but mess the whole thing up. We're probably going back to TVs next year just because they can't, um, polish a game. But, um, number two is Elden Ring, LOL. Uh, like, <laughs> LOL. <laughs> like for us, for us, for us, like down bad the game got for me towards the end. I still enjoyed it in the beginning. For me to complete a Souls game, in terms of like, um, what is that called? In terms of like, uh, what is it? In terms of like just completing a Souls game in general, because that shit difficult. So for me, completing a Souls game and completing it to the point 
that I played the numerous times, not just for like a platinum, but for like period, just going through that motherfucker. It was fun. Have fun playing with the homies, even though that's the worst multiplayer ever. Uh, just great memories all together. From the magic build to the, the rivers of blood to the colossal weapons and shit like that. It was great. But last and not least is um, it's, uh, Father Simulator, God of War. Unfortunately, Chris can't hasn't experienced the much as <laughs> <it's, laughs> we have. Um, but Joe, I I love God of War too. I know a lot of people saying it's just God of War one with with, with pizzazz, but that's what makes it so great. But um, yeah, God of War two, Platinum did want to play it again, but realized I don't. You know, but what for? But it was great. Everything about it. We talked about it in the podcast. You want to hit a review of the game, so I can't talk about it no more. But um, yeah, that's my top five. I didn't. I don't think I played as many. This is like probably the first year. I ain't played as many games as Cam did. Well, probably like the first. Because yeah, Cam of, went through that sh- Switch catalog like a mother. I played a shit ton of new games. <laughs> like a lot of new games this year. <laughs> I was hopping around games to games to games. But my play, my PlayStation is weird. Like my PlayStation list is weird. So uh, my top five. So I got a, I got a, I got a total of a thousand two hundred forty eight hours for PlayStation. This is PlayStation. Switch, I got a lot of hours on that bitch, bro. <laughs> but my top my top game that I played was uh, Danganronpa 1 and 2 Reload, old game. I think I bought it on a sale, and I played the whole thing. But And it says I have 112 hours logged in, which Ooh. can't be right. It probably, it probably because a lot of times I was just like, I sat the game down and I wasn't playing it. So they probably counted that. Um, but it is like two big games. And one uh, thing, but yeah, I got Danganronpa one and two reload is my number one. Then Overwatch two, unfortunately. Uh, then unfortunately, Elden Ring, Soul Hackers two, and then Persona Five Royale. I don't know how Persona Five Royale made the list. I played it for like a little bit this year, <laughs> and I guess they're like, okay, I guess we'll put it on your top five. But so shout out to that. Um, but as far as my actual <clears throat> top five list, I'm gonna give an honorable mention to uh, Midnight Suns. Only because that game surprised me as far as how much I enjoy it, gameplay wise, story wise, and character wise. Entirely different story, um, but the gameplay is really good. It carries that game. Um, it's really fun, uh, highly entertaining. As far as if you if you enjoy like strategy games and stuff like that, then you would you'd enjoy Midnight Suns. Um, and if you're a Marvel fan, you kind of get to see kind of oh, I'm putting Captain Marvel, Wolverine, and uh captain america on the same team like it's, it's pretty cool to see stuff like that uh take shape um so i have to give honorable mention to uh midnight suns uh also the preference uh from all you from software fans elden ring is not going to be on my list so is what it is it's not on my list at all not even touching <laughs> it not even remotely touching it um and if you want to know why if you are reacting to me not having elden ring on the list and you are from software fan that's why um so uh number five i have live alive so a lot of these so basically two three of these games are switch titles and two of them are playstation 5 titles um live alive was a switch exclusive game uh from an snes game that released i think it was snes but it was a snes game that released japan only a long time ago and it got a remaster um for this year i did a i did a brief uh i'd have to read i have to read upload it because this is when we made our transition into our uh, new channel but I did do a review of Live Alive and it is one of the most unique JRPGs I've ever played like ever um, especially pixel based uh, I really enjoyed it the, the the it was it's basically eight individual stories um, t- taken throughout various time periods so you have the prehistoric ages medieval ages you got you know futuristic you got like way into the future like it's a lot of cool stuff and then like each each um tale has a different protagonist and each tale has a different gameplay style and i'm like holy crap again and it's like the way they do it it's like really cool um uh and unique <clears throat> for what i was expecting um so i i highly recommend it if you're if you're somebody if you're somebody who kind of likes classic you know, 2D pixel-based uh, JRPGs, and you own a Nintendo Switch, and you happen to, you know, whenever Switch does its uh, 
by by century uh sale um and you happen to catch live alive on sale i i would highly recommend you get it <laughs> it is a good it is a good uh ex experience uh number four i have god of war ragnarok holy crap god of war is not your number one no it's not uh, but it's a good game uh i really enjoyed it um kratos's character the world building even atreus annoying ass sometimes uh it was it was all good shout out to sif and sif got me in a chokehold uh for the for the snow bunnies <laughs> um so yeah it was really great the combat it was it was it was like it's like one of those things where like when people say that like oh it, <clears throat> it's just god of war one but better it's like yeah no shit that's kind of what i expect a sequel to do <laughs> so and it did it really good um so i really enjoyed a lot of it i'm currently on a platinum grind for god of war but like i'm not going to get to that like no time soon but i will want to i do want to like eventually 100 percent and platinum the game because i really enjoyed my time with it uh and like the trail said we have a review on our channel so check that out if you're interested to hear like more in-depth analysis of what we thought about the game uh number three i have soul hackers 2 this is essentially the tied in between shimigami tensei and persona 6 uh for atlas um and the first soul hacker game that we got was like back on the nes <laughs> like a long ass time ago so it's been a it's been a long time since we even got this isn't like a sequel necessarily i don't know because I, I never played the original soul hacker so if anybody out there who's listening has played the soul hacker the original one and can tell me it's a sequel you know go for it but I really enjoyed this game. Um, <clears throat> it's like the way they did the gameplay. It's like a it's like a, a cool little mix of like elements from Persona Five and elements from Shin Megami Tensei, um, the Shin Megami Tensei series, kind of blended together um, as far as like the way they presented combat in this game. Uh, I like the story. I enjoyed the characters. Um, a lot of the gameplay elements were a bit archaic but they did address some of that stuff they they put like a patch out like like a like a month into the game's release that like gave, gave like a lot of quality of life improvements to the traversal because that was a, kind of my biggest thing with the game was the traversal was kind of annoying at times so they fixed that but all in all it was a great experience um i i if they ever get a soul hackers 3 i'll definitely be playing it because i want to see more of the universe and what they can do because every single Atlas game has something to do with the world ending. So I just want to know how, you know, how else the world, how else is the world going to end in Soul Hackers uh, 3. So um, I, if you ever catch the game, I think the game is on sale now because of the New Year's stuff. So if you are a fan of turn-based JRPGs, you like Atlas games, you like Persona 5 Royale or Persona 5, whatever, check it out. Uh, my number two is Triangle Strategy. This was a Switch exclusive title um, by Square Enix. I really, really, really loved this game. Um, it's an SRPG, so if you are somebody who's like into Fire Emblem or something like that, this is kind of like what the game is. Um, really great game. It's a game that is choice-based, so a lot of your choices in the game will depend on, a lot of your choices that you make throughout the game will take you to one of four endings, I think there is. So it's a lot of replayability, there's a lot of units in the game that have very unique gameplay mechanics that depending on your style of play in terms of strategic rpgs you can do a lot of cool and unique setups whether you want to be a fucking powerhouse or whether you want to like set your enemies up with like magic spells or dehabilitating spells. it's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it um so uh yeah i i this is kind of like this is also made by the same studio who made like octopath traveler and stuff like that so um if you're somebody who's familiar with that style of game as far as like the art style and stuff like that um you'll 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 really like this game so triangle strategy is my number two and obviously i've been saying this all year my number one game is xenoblade chronicles 3 by far definitively i have over 300 hours into that game alone <laughs> i absolutely love that game i've been a huge fan of xenoblade chronicles uh since the first game shout out to uh chugga conroy He's a, he's a Let's Play YouTuber that got me introduced to the Xenoblade Chronicles franchise, and I fell in love with it ever since. Uh, I was a bit kind of eh on 2. 2 was alright, but it didn't really catch me like uh, 1 did. But 3 definitely got me from start. Uh, it was um, it was a lot of... Uh, it, it was a lot of elements from 1 and 2 that they took in terms of enhancing the gameplay. 
I mean, in this game, you have access to six party members, basically from jump. Um, each of them can have their own unique job classes. So basically, there's kind of like two attackers, two defensives, two two two, two tanks, and then two healers. Um, and throughout the game, you unlock more and more job classes. So you can really have like choose your own style of like, you know what type of attackers what type of tanks and what type of healers you want on your squad it's like a lot of it, it it take forever to explain it's like super complex as far as like a lot of stuff you can set up within that game as far as your party formation story was absolutely amazing i'm a bit iffy on the ending there were some parts of it that i was kind of like eh on but for the most part the story the characters um a lot of it hit the beat the ost is phenomenal but again that's just you know xenoblade chronicles always has great uh, ost so it was a great experience. It was it was the different it was the definitive switch title of the year for sure. Um, so you know obviously this year is going to be Zelda, um, but uh, I would say that if you are somebody uh, who is interested, in, it's not necessarily a JRPG as far as like turn based, uh, but it's it's a it's a mix between like you know like action based and also a little elements of JRPG. So if you're somebody who it's kind of into that it's a huge open world a ton of stuff to do so if you want a, like a time sync type of game um and a game that rewards exploration and really rewards you it really placates to differing styles of gameplay as far as what you want your party chemistry to be it really it uh, i would highly recommend uh picking up Blade chronicles 3 if you own a switch um and that is my top five gaming of this year all right cool so that's our recap for last year so hope you guys appreciate it